Electric dipole. Electric dipole is a special problem in electrostatic fields, and it is quite useful to explain the, the properties of dielectric materials. So we are going to study the electric dipole uh, in details from the point of view of its electric field and its electric potential. Uh, electric dipole effectively is composed of two point charges, two point electric charge, separated by distance d, and these two charges are equal in magnitude and opposite uh, sides. So we have positive q and negative q separated by distance d. This is this configuration is known or defined as electric dipole and effectively di here it means two so we have two poles and one of wood is positive and the other pole is negative uh, assuming that our uh, electric dipole is allocated along uh, the z axis and its center is located at the origin and we are interested to find out uh, the electric potential and the electric heat at a point B in uh, general spherical coordinates which has a distance R from the origin and angle theta from the z-axis and angle phi from the projection of R with respect to the x-axis uh, effectively we are going to assume that the point B at this case uh, in yz plane so there is no need for the angle phi. Uh, we are going to assume that the distance d between the two point charge is much smaller than the distance to the observation point r. So in this case, the distance from the positive q to the observation point r1 and the distance from the negative q to the observation point r2 are nearly the same because effectively we are going to assume b in a very large distance so these three uh, lines would appear nearly to be parallel so in this case the value of r1 and r2 are nearly would equal the value of r which is coming from the origin but if we are talking about the difference between them, to find out the difference, we will take the projection of the point charge Q plus or positive Q on the line of R2. So in this case, since they are parallel to each other, they are nearly the same. So the difference here between R2 and R1 is nearly d cosine c so as a magnitude we are going to use r1 equals r2 equals r but if you are talking about the difference between r2 and r1 we are going to take the value of d cosine c so this is a basic approximation which we are going to use in the analysis of this data uh, here what we are seeing, an electric dipole or simply dipole is the name given to two pointed charges of equal magnitude and opposite sign separated by a distance that is small compared to the distance of the point at which we want to find the electric field and electric potential. Now, as we are talking about a pointed charge, so we can say that the electric potential at the point B due to the positive charge would be Q over 4 by epsilon R1 Q over 4 by epsilon naught R1 and the electric potential due to the negative charge would be minus Q over 4 by epsilon R2 and this can be arranged as Q over 4 by epsilon naught R2 minus R1 over R1 multiplied by R2 and as we mentioned 
for the difference between R2 and R1, we can approximate it as D cosine theta. But for the absolute value of R1 and R2, we can replace it by small r, which is a distance from the origin direction. So, the potential here can be approximated as Q multiplied by D cosine theta, which is the difference between R2 and R1, over R squared, which is nearly R1 multiplied by R2. Okay? So, this is the potential difference at an arbitrary point located at the distance r from the center of the electric field. If we have the electric potential, we can obtain the electric field. How come? The electric field is minus the gradient of the electric potential. So, the electric field is minus gradient of the electric potential. And the problem here is presented in spherical coordinates because we are talking about r and theta so we are talking about spherical coordinates so in this case the electric field is minus gradient v which is minus partial v by partial r in r direction plus 1 over r partial v by partial theta in theta direction plus 1 over r sine theta partial v by partial phi in phi direction by taking the derivative with respect to r, it would be q d cosine theta over 4 by epsilon naught minus 2 over r cube minus 2 or minus 1 or minus 1, 1 minus 1 over 2 r cube. Okay, so q d q d cosine theta over minus 2 over r cube. Uh, the derivative with respect to theta, 1 over r here, and the derivative with respect to theta, cosine theta would be minus sine theta. So this minus sine theta. Ah, here we have minus 2 and we have 4 by, so this 2 by. So minus 2 over 4 by, it would be 1 over 2 by. Okay? And here we have minus q d sine theta over 4 by epsilon naught r q in theta direction. So this is the electric field at the observation point r due to an electric dipole. Okay. So we can, uh, this minus sign, this minus sign, with this minus sign could be positive. We can take q d over 4 by epsilon r cube as a common factor so the remaining part would be 2 cosine theta in r direction plus sine theta in theta direction all right if we remember uh, how to draw uh, the streamlines so we are going to draw the streamlines of and the equipotential surfaces of such dipole. We find that the equipotential surface it can be represented as V equal Q D cosine theta over 4 by epsilon R square. So in this case, Q D over 4 by epsilon Assuming that it is constant value, we are talking about cosine theta equal V multiplied by R square. So, the equipotential surfaces would be presented as cosine theta would equal V multiplied by R square. So, by uh, replacing this V by different values, for example, 1 volt, half volt, 0.6 volt, 4 volt, and draw the function of R with respect to theta, we find out these blue lines. So, these blue lines would correspond to the equipotential surface. Uh, on the other hand, if we are talking about the electric field streamlines, so, if we remember, in the electric field streamlines, we have theta component and phi component, 
So E theta over E R would correspond to R D theta over D R. So in this case E theta E theta is sine theta and E R is two cosine theta. So R D theta over D R equals sine theta over two cosine theta. Or in other words, we can say that dr over r, dr over r, would equal 2 cotan theta d theta. 2 cotan theta, 2 cosan theta over sin theta, 2 cotan theta d theta, equal dr over r. By integrating both sides, we can say that r, as a function of theta, would be a constant multiplied by sin squared theta. So, by taking different values of this constant, for example, 1, 1 and a half, 2, and so on, we can draw the different values of the streamline. So, assuming that this c equal 1, this c equal 1 and a half, this c equal 2, and so on. So, we can replace the value of c with a constant value, and we draw that trace of the value of r with respect to c and this corresponds to the equi or the streamlines of the elliptic fields we can note that uh, both the electric potential and the electric field depends on the value of the q of d uh, q multiplied by d here uh, and assuming that we are going to define d as a vector quantity coming from the negative charge to the positive charge so we are going to define this value as the electric dipole moment p so the electric dipole moment is the value of the charge multiplied by the displacement from the negative to the positive take care it is from the negative to the positive and the electric double moment is a vector quantity and its vector is coming from the vector of the displacement so in this case we said that the potential was qd cosine theta over 4 by epsilon naught r square effectively qd cosine theta can be represented as a vector quantity as the electric double moment b dot AR. So D dot AR effectively is D cosine theta. So if I'm talking about Q D dot AR, I'm talking about Q D cosine theta. So Q D cosine theta can be replaced by the dipole moment B dot product with the vector to the observation point AR. So generally speaking, the potential of any electric dipole can be obtained as the electric dipole moment dot the vector to the observation point over 4 by epsilon r square where r square here is the distance from the center of the dipole to the observation point so now we are not just limited to a dipole in uh, along the z axis <coughs> we can apply this rule for any double in any direction all right similarly if this dipole is not located at the origin so in this case r here would not be coming from the origin it would be r minus r dash where r dash is the center of the dipole moment so more general we can see that the electric potential of any dipole located in any direction and its center is located at point r dash is 1 over 4 by epsilon the modulus of r minus r dash squared which corresponds to this r squared multiplied by b the dipole moment dot the unit vector from the source point to the observation point or from the center of the dipole moment to the observation point. So, B dot 
R minus R dash over the modulus of R minus R dash, which correspond to the unit vector from the center of the dipole moment to the observation. Where R locates the field point and R dash determines the dipole center. So this is how to find the electric potential of a general dipole located in a general direction and centered at a general point R dash. Okay.